When you brought up DMT, it brought up another question, which is the which is the concept of like state dependent learning, th- mm-hmm. where it's like there are certain things that might be learned, but they are gone when the context in which they're learned is gone. Like we talked about that earlier when it was like. Mm-hmm. The cue was my external environment, but then maybe the cue is a particular sort of physiological disposition, a certain sort of like affective disposition that is unique to the psychedelic that without that, we're not as able to access certain things. And so then you have DMT is, I mean, the issue of not being able to talk on it. Well, that's one thing. But then there's also the issue of like, 90% 90% of the experience being gone within a few minutes of getting back to reality. So yeah. I'm curious about um, what your thoughts are on this loss of the memory of the experience and why that might be the case. Sure. So um, I, I've talk, I, 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 I didn't talk about this much, but I, I have thought about it for a very long time because it's very interesting, right? You have these substances, you give them to a person or, or you don't, you know, one should do this. Like, <laughs> don't <laughs> deal drugs, <laughs> kids. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you have these substances, a person takes them and then suddenly they do have access to this increased repertoire of their memories and uh, they enter this world when they can be remodulating them but then the experience itself is not actually recollected in much detail when Mm. you're out of it um but it's still in, it is still encoded and, uh, encoded, and here I can only talk about anecdotal evidence because, again, there's no actual study today that looks at how people remember things under the uh, uh, influence of uh, psychedelics to this in, in this particular context. But anecdotally speaking, based on talking to people who have uh, taken these substances before and so on, um, what you realize is that people tend to remember their previous psychedelic experiences the best when they are also on psychedelics. And this is the case with LSD. This is the case with DMT specifically where people may be uh, meeting these uh, entities, the space elves, or uh, uh, regardless of how they want to call it, they have many names. And then uh, they remember everything from their previous trip and their previous trip and so on. And in that state, they can uh, remember this. Well, I I suppose state-dependent learning is a very, very um, uh, strong process, right? And it's similar with the environment that you were mentioning earlier. Like when you were in your hometown, again, you could remember so, so, so many things. Um, But when you weren't there, if someone asked you, do you remember what games you used to play with your neighbors on the street? Uh, you weren't necessarily able to think about that in as much detail and depth as when you were actually in the hometown. And um, my thoughts on this are that I'm not sure whether we are going to be able to to, to like ever take everything out of the experience back into the sober state. I'm not sure if this is possible. Um, I, I hope it is, but it's a very, very difficult methodological challenge here because when you are thinking about things like memory and then dependent learning and so on, um, and psychedelics specifically, there's only so much into the environment that you can measure uh, where the most powerful tool that you're relying on is the self-report of the person. And that self-report is going to be affected in the psychedelic experience. If you're going to ask someone to recall their other psychedelic experience just to test whether um, and how well this process is working, their speech function might be impaired by the experience itself. So therefore, this makes information being uh, information extracting very difficult. And what is even more difficult here is that um, you would get someone to tell you uh, during a psychedelic experience, a simple sentence, which for you is what it is. It's the door was black. That's what it was for you. But for this person, the very idea of door might actually relate to so many other concepts because mm-hmm. of the strong, um, 
strong associations that people, the, the associations that people are able to form during psychedelics and how suggestible they are and so on. And the fact that it was black might actually mean a trillion of other things as well. And they're not conveying that because they're clearly unable, but there is other information. So I think that is very, very difficult to study this from a methodological perspective. But there are I'm confident that the solution would be somewhere in the realm of technology, hmm. to be fair. Somewhere in the realm of or looking at speech, for example, using cons- uh, uh, advanced processes such as natural language processing, um, which has been previously used in studies on psychedelics. Um, uh, Enzo Tagliazuki's lab in Argentina did something on this, which was very, very interesting. They uh, screened the AeroWid reports and used uh, this AI algorithm of natural language processing to look at what people were talking about. So this might be one way of extracting information and then trying to build this uh, huge model where you also input the brain activity data, uh, as well as cognitive tasks data and all of the other factors in the environment. But yeah, I, I do think that it's a very interesting question. Why can't we actually take everything we want out of the experience mm-hmm. out? into the world again and why is it only available in that state um yeah i guess Um, like having asked the question it's it's fair to suggest that i can't remember everything i did yesterday um as well but there's something i think about the like the the added experience of profundity of of how profound it is that makes it feel like you could never forget it because it's just so meaningful and yet, within a couple, I mean, with DMT, it could be within, you know, 20 minutes, a half hour, you forget what it was, even moments, right? But with even like our most powerful psychedelic revelations, people might be two, three, four weeks and having totally forgot everything about it, if intentional efforts aren't made to, you know, carry it in yeah. long term memory or something. Yeah, so here is where psychedelics have been previously associated with dreams quite a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, because uh, similarly with dreams, it, while you're in the dream, it might seem very, very vivid and actually relating to reality in many, many different ways. And you might not even know that you're dreaming unless you're trained in lucid dreaming or similar practices uh, many times. Um, but then it's uh, nearly impossible to recall them after a while. And especially after time, you only get the gist of it out. And I think... Um, I, I think there, there could, we could um, go back to one of the earliest metaphors on psychedelics, that they're like a mic- microscopy into, into the human experience, really. Mm. So the human experience would be something of this size, but then you magnify that through a glass and then you can see all of these different details. But then once you take the glass away, you only have the same dot that you are looking at from afar, right. if and you whatever you and remember. Then, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And that dot then undergoes the same processes of consolidation and reconsolidation of all of your other normal memories. But in the absence of this magnifying glass, you can't actually see the details. And um, I think there's something to be taken away from uh, from here that uh, it is a very difficult question to ask. And uh, the way to keep remembering what's happening would essentially mean that you have to always have a magnifying glass over it or extract enough information through the magnifying glass that you can take out and then recall later. Mm-hmm. Um, and one one way to do this, and w- which people have, are doing um, in research, for example. So um, in research, research settings, people are obviously asked to uh, talk about their trips quite extensively straight after the trip has finished. And uh, while they may not remember entirely at that point, they surely do remember more than they would remember if they haven't uh, written everything down at that time and later. Um, And I think what's special about psychedelics is that this magnifying glass is more magnifying than anything else that we do have out there, which is uh, further exacerbating the problem. But At the end of the day, um, there are other things that we can look at that have similar uh, properties, such as uh, intense emotional experiences. For example, if you are witnessing a um, bank robbing or something. Or birth, uh, you know. Or or birth or anything like this. Exactly, exactly. And psychedelics have actually been compared to the birth of a child in terms of the importance that they um, have in people's lives. Um, I... 
I think similarly you can take with such experience that in the moment you're so emotionally engaged and everything, every single detail is so salient to you. Well, once you're out of it, you only get with a sentence. This person has been given birth in front of me. It was intense, full stop. Uh, while in the moment, it's more of like this, bir- this person who's giving birth has this foot in this exact angle and this is what's happening. And perhaps this is just something that comes to my mind right now. Perhaps this is actually something that's um, uh, like an evolutionary advantage for humans. When you are uh, in particularly emotionally engaging situations, do pay more attention to the details around because if you pay more details, uh, more attention to the details around when similar situations are going to occur in the future, you're going to be more aware of the environment and this is going to be useful for you to either escape the situation or do whatever you are able to do or want to do then. Um, yeah. Well, you know, that, that that's interesting because it, you know, yes, likely for many of us, we'll just remember sort of how it felt. And then the sentence of the baby was birth. But then it's, it is possible for us to intentionally effort towards remembering things in a more complex or even poetic way. I mean, using poetry is usually, I, I feel like poetic, associative, metaphorical language is so much more effective to explain what's happening with psychedelics than uh, trying to literally describe something that is literally beyond the language I've learned uh, to understand and navigate and orient reality. Um, mm. But that there's there are efforts that can be made to increase the ability to recall the full or at least a greater spectrum of what was happening there. Just like, mm-hmm. you know, I... I am much better at dream recall recall than my partner is. And that's because she never made it ha- and still doesn't choose to make any effort to try to remember where I have a whole history mm-hmm. of my much of my life since I was a teenager being completely um, enamored by the idea of dreaming and intentional dreaming and lucid dreaming and remembering my dreams that I have mm-hmm. it as a skill set that I, I've, I've developed over the years. Um, so that there's, there's a possibility there of developing, this is, I guess, a, you know, the, the issue of integration comes in, you know, because we do an integrative mm-hmm. practice in order to, you know, effectively make sure we remember what is most impactful or most meaningful in our day-to-day lives and then finding ways to do that. But then also as a skill set, our ability to generate, uh, or not generate, our, our ability to intentionally remember things that we developed, or uh, intentionally remember things that otherwise we would have forgotten if we didn't develop the skill to remember those things. Just like you're mm-hmm. developing the skill as an academic to remember certain things in certain ways, you know, somebody who is a psychonaut develops the ability to remember and describe things about their psychedelic experiences in a way that somebody who doesn't, who hasn't developed that skill wouldn't be able to. So there, I think there's a lot of uh, space and possibility there to, to, to train, to train the mind to be able to be greater at um, bringing more back um, than it sort of inherently might. Uh, absolutely. So I do definitely agree with what you're saying. And I think that there are ways, um, uh, chunking, for example, is one mnemotic uh, way of remembering things. So that is like... Um, categorizing things into different chunks, breaking breaking the situation apart. So in the terms of the psychedelic trip, we could make a parallel, let's just say that the person, okay, first hour, it's been about this, make a note here, and then so on and so on. And then at the end, when they go over it, then they can think about each of the subtitles in sight and then expand on each of them, just like in a fractal. Uh, yeah, so no, th- there's definitely uh, a lot of things that can be done for individuals to do remember if that's what they wish to pursue, of course. Um, but I guess that the question is, it becomes a bit more difficult when we're talking about research settings, because mm-hmm. when we're talking about research settings, uh, there's only so much that you can ask of people to be trained into this uh, type of uh, remembering the experiences. And this is also something that's entirely subjective at the end of the day. Um, in the absence of any standardized uh, measuring tools that we can use to say to what degree is this person able to recall this the, the their dreams in general more than this other person so these are not currently things that would be straightforward to implement into the scientific pursuit however i do agree that in terms of personal development and people trying to remember their dreams for example uh, there are various ways that they can train themselves to 
uh, do this. And your example is very, very uh, much speaking for that anecdotally. Mm-hmm.